Shalom. Happy Sabbath to everyone. Hallelujah. Welcome back. Welcome back. You ready to get back into the word of Yahweh? Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go to the book, the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, beginning at verse 1, all the way down to verse 71. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 22. You got your scriptures? All right. Let's begin. Verse 1. And the festival of Mazat drew near, which is called Pisa. All right. Luke is a physician. He's a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham. He wrote the Gospel of Luke. <laughs> Luke is of the ten tribes of the northern kingdom that were scattered. And the northern kingdom, when they were scattered, they were no longer referred to as Israel. They were referred to as Gentiles or Greeks or whatever location where they were living. Uh, the Apostle Paul always referenced uh, Jews and Greeks or Jews and Gentiles. And that's in reference to the two kingdoms of the Israel. So that's important because you have to keep the scriptures in context. And most people, when they get to the New Testament, they don't understand that context. The scriptures are written to, for, and about the chosen people, the 12 tribes of Israel. From Genesis to Revelation. And you have to understand that context. Because if you don't. You take the scriptures out of context. And that's why we have all these different religions. Because they're trying to make the scriptures fit their cup of tea. Islam, Christianity, Judaism, uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, Catholicism. Seven Day of Venice, Mormonism, Jehovah Witness, all these different religions. The Most High, Yahweh, don't have anything to do with any religion at all. Yahweh Shai, Jesus, doesn't have anything to do with any religion. Yahweh is a God of a people. Yahweh of a people. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who is Israel. He's not Yahweh of a people. He's not Yahweh of a religion. He's Yahweh of a people. And so, from Genesis to Revelation, that's what the scriptures are about. And Yahweh Shai, Jesus, he's the Messiah of a people, the 12 tribes of Israel. <laughs> but when you get to the New Testament, people want to say, oh, it's about everybody. But when you do that, you take the scriptures out of context, and then Yahweh doesn't have a chosen people anymore because it's about everybody. So there's a conflict, and so... You, the, the, the scriptures don't contradict itself. It's people taking the scriptures out of context, which create the contradiction. So verse 1, Luke chapter 22, verse 1 says, The festival of Mazat drew near, which is called Pesach. And so they're talking about the Passover. What is the Passover? So that's why you got to go back to the Old Testament, because the New Testament and the Old Testament are in agreement. They're not in conflict. They don't want to accord. <laughs> they agree with each other. The, the Passover is when the Most High Yahweh delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt. And so that's why we're still keeping this in the New Testament because it's about the children of Israel, all 12 tribes of Israel. But Israel was divided into two kingdoms. That's what most people fail to realize. When Solomon was king, the Most High ran the kingdom from him and divided Israel into two, into two separate kingdoms. The northern kingdom was ten tribes, called Israel. <laughs> and the southern kingdom was Judah and Benjamin, called Judah, but referred to as Jews. And so when people get to the New Testament, they don't make that connection, and they don't understand that Jews only represent the southern kingdom of Israel. It does not represent all 12 tribes of Israel. So they take the scriptures out of context through ignorance. And I blame the 501c3 corporations, pastors, preachers, and teachers of the Antichrist church system for deceiving you. Yahweh Shai Jesus said, Many will come in my name and deceive many. And that's what happened, especially with Christianity and all the other religions. 
All religions are Antichrist. So the Passover is when Yahweh delivered us. And I say us because the scriptures are a history book about a chosen people who are us. <laughs> All those people that was trafficked it, trafficked in the Atlantic slave trade, that's us. We're the chosen Israelite, the, the, the southern kingdom of, of Judah. We were scattered throughout all the earth, the four corners of the earth. So, Yahweh delivered us out of Egypt the first time, and we kept the Passover when he delivered us. And so we're still keeping the Passover because he's going to deliver us out of Egypt again. All of the uh, southern kingdom of Judah is in captivity. All of the 12 tribes are, are scattered now. None of the 12 tribes are in the place, the, the promised land. It may be there, some of them, but the majority of us are scattered because of disobedience. The Most High scattered all the 12 tribes of Israel out of the promised land because of disobedience. And so we see here in the New Testament, Yahweh Shai is with his disciples, and they're about to uh, partake of the Passover, Mazat. The festival of Mazat. Mazat is unleavened bread. And so the Passover and Mazat, unleavened bread, they go hand in hand. The Passover in Hebrew is a Pesach. And unleavened bread in, in Hebrew is uh, Mazat. And so these are the two Hebrew words talking about the, the, the festival of unleavened bread, which is called the Passover. And so... The Passover lamb was killed in, in the book of Genesis uh, when the Most High was delivering us out of Egypt. Uh, we slew the Passover lamb and put the, the blood on the doorpost and lentil. And the death angel passed over all of Israel and slew the firstborn of all the Egyptians. And so Pharaoh couldn't take it and he finally... <laughs> Realized who he was dealing with, and the Most High delivered us out of Egypt, and we didn't come out empty-handed. <laughs> they were happy to see us leave. <laughs> and so the same thing is going to happen again when the Most High returns. He's coming to gather all of the 12 tribes of Israel from where we're scattered, from where we are in captivity. And when we come out, it's going to be a second exodus. And all of the people that have held us in captivity, they're going to know who they're dealing with and who ha they have dealt with all this time and how they've treated us. The payback is coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So, Yahweh Shai and his disciples are keeping the Passover because it's about the 12 tribes of Yisrael. It's not about everybody else in the whole wide world. And so, everybody else in the whole wide world with the Catholic Church and Christianity and whatever other religion, try to call this Easter, but that's mixing it with all these pagan religions, and that's through Rome. It doesn't have anything to do with Easter and the bunny rabbit or anything that like that. It's the Passover lamb being uh, slaughtered, his blood for the children of Yisrael. Now Yahweh Shai is the true Passover for the 12 tribes of Israel to redeem us back to Yahweh as his chosen people. Hallelujah. We're going to see that in a minute. Verse 2. And the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to kill him, and they feared the people. So the chief priests, the priests are Levites. There were, all the Levites were scattered, were well not scattered, but divided into all the 12 tribes of Yisrael because they didn't have a portion in the land. So there were the priest tribes. And so there were priest tribes in Judea, in Jerusalem. And so these are the chief priests that they're talking about and the scribes. All these people are Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, the southern kingdom of Judah. That's where they're they're a part of. And we're seeking how to kill him. Kill who? Kill who? 
kill your Howard Shai. Jesus. <laughs> Why did they want to kill him? Because he was saying that he was the Messiah, the Savior of the 12 tribes of Israel. And so they had a conflict with that because Yahweh Shai didn't come in the way that they expected him to come. They took the scriptures out of context and thought he was going to come in, uh, immediately to deliver them out of the hand of the, the Roman occupation. Because at this time, and during this time still, all of the 12 tribes of Israel are under Roman occupation. They were under Roman occupation during the lifetime of Yahweh Shai Jesus, and they're still, we're still under Roman occupation. The scripture says that we would, we would be led away captive into all nations. We would fall by the edge of the sword, and Jerusalem would be led will be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. These are the times of the Gentiles right now. <laughs> and they're not going to be fulfilled until Yahweh Shai comes back. The people over in the land, most people think are Israel, but they're not. They just practice a Judean religion. Anybody, anywhere can practice a Judean religion can practice any religion. Anyone can practice a religion. And so that's what they do. That's why they call themselves Jewish. But they are not of the seed of Abraham, nor are they of the tribe of Judah, the southern kingdom of Judah. They're Ashkenaz, Khazarians, Japhet Gentiles, and Edomites who have taken over that land by fraud and deceit. And since 1948... The world accepts them as the chosen people, but they are not. All of the chosen people are scattered to the four corners of the earth, especially the southern kingdom of Judah. The rest of the ten tribes are scattered, but they're not scattered as far as the, the southern kingdom of Judah. And so the people over in the land right now, they're not the chosen people. All of the chosen people are scattered. And so the chief priests are trying to kill Yahweh Shai because he's saying that he is the Messiah of Yisrael. And so when Yahweh Shai comes back, that's, that's when he's going to take over the whole earth. He's coming back for his chosen people. But everyone else, oh, y'all going to get dealt with for the way you've treated the chosen people. And some of the people that are going to get dealt with are, are the tribe of Judah that still don't believe the gospel of the kingdom. A lot of the, the southern kingdom of Judah are deceived because we don't understand the scriptures. We, a lot of us don't know who we are, that we are the chosen people because of the transatlantic slave trade. When we went through that, <clears throat> they took everything. Our culture, our birthright, our heritage, our identity, our names, our language, everything that they can take, they took. And now we don't know, the majority of us don't know who we are. And telling it to you, a lot of y'all, it's strange. It's like a foreign language. Like, what am I talking about? But when I say us, that's why I'm saying us is because the scriptures are our history book. If you want to know who you are, read the scriptures. It tells us exactly who we are. It's written to us, for us, and about us. But the, the scribes and the chief priests, they didn't understand the context. And so Yahweh Shai, they're trying to kill Yahweh Shai because he's saying that he is the Messiah. But they feared the people because he was teaching in the, in the temple daily. But they didn't uh, they didn't reach out to attack him or, or capture him during that time, especially when he was in the temple because they feared the rest of the, the southern kingdom of Judah, the people. That's who they're talking about. Not everybody else in the whole wide world. Verse 3, And Satan entered into Judah, who was called man from Cariot, Iscariot, who was numbered among the twelve. And so the devil entered into uh, Judas. Judas was numbered among the 12 tribes of Israel, the, the, the 12 disciples that Yahweh Shai had chosen. And he was from Iscariot. And so it's ironic 
in a coincidence that his name happened to be Judas. And it could parallel and represent that you, the southern kingdom betrayed Yahweh Shai, Jesus. Because that's what happened. That's why we end up getting scattered. Because uh, <laughs> Yahweh, he's not playing. And he, he warned us and warned us all the way through the Old Testament until now, even today. If you don't act right, you're going to be scattered. You don't want to serve me, you're going to serve your enemies. And so that's what happened. Uh, Jerusalem was trodden down by the Gentiles, and in 70 AD, the Romans conquered Jerusalem and, and, and scattered all the southern kingdom. We fled into parts of the continent of Africa and dwelt there for some time. And then the transatlantic slave trade happened, and we were brought into captivity. We fell by the edge of the sword, and we've been in captivity ever since then. And we're going to be in captivity until Yahweh Shai returns. And so everywhere we've scattered, they say they freed us, freed the slaves, but we're still in the land of our captivity. There will be no reparations for us. The only reparations... Is when Yahweh Shai comes to redeem us, all of the 12 tribes of Israel. So, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh said we were guilty. We didn't do what he asked us to do. And so, this is our punishment. But he still sent Yahweh to redeem us, to forgive us of all our sins and unrighteousness. <laughs> That's who he's coming back for. He's sending Yahweh Shai to, to save all of the 12 tribes of Israel. Hallelujah. Verse 4. And he went and spoke with the chief priests and captains how he might deliver him up to them. So this is Judah. Judah is one of the 12, tri 12 disciples. And he's going to the chief priests and the captains. And he's speaking to them and telling them, look, I can get you how shy, Jesus. I can bring him to you. <laughs> so this is the deal that Judas is making with the chief priests. Verse 5, and they were glad and agreed to give him silver. And so whatever Judas said, they received it, believed it, accepted it. It was a contract. And so they agreed to give him silver. They agreed to pay Judas to, to turn over Jesus to them. And so this is the agreement. Verse 6, and he promised and was seeking an occasion to deliver him up to them away from the crowd. And so these are the stipulations of the contract that he was going to deliver Yahweh Shai Jesus to the chief priests and captains. Uh, he was going to find a, 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 an appropriate time, an occasion to deliver, deliver him away when there is no crowd around. Hallelujah. <laughs> Verse 7, And the day of unleavened bread came when Pasa, Pisa was had to be slaughtered. And so, again, they're mentioning unleavened bread, mazat. And when the pizza, the Passover, had to be killed. And so this is a carrying, the Passover that we kept from when we were delivered out of Egypt until now. And it's also the same time frame when Yahweh Shai is getting ready to lay down his life. For all of the 12 tribes of Israel, he's going to be slaughtered. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 8. And he sent Kepha and Yohanan, Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the pasta, pizza for us to eat. And so this is who he sent to prepare for the Passover. Because all of them are Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, the southern kingdom of Judah. That's who the Passover is for. It's not for everybody else in the whole wide world. Verse 9. And they said to him, Where do you wish us to prepare? So they was asking Peter and, 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 and Johanna, Peter and John, they was asking Yahweh Shai, Where do you want us to prepare for the Passover? Verse 10. And he said to them, See, as you enter into the city, a man shall meet you carrying a jar of water. 
Follow him into the house, he enters. So Yahweh Shai explained to them, it was almost like prophecy. And he said, it's already been done, already been prepared. You're going to go into the city, you're going to see a man carrying a jar of water, just follow him. <laughs> that, those, those were the instructions that Yahweh Shai gave to uh, Kepha and Yohanan. Verse 11. And you shall say to the master of the house, The teacher says to you, Where is the guest room where I might eat the pizza with my taught ones, with my disciples? And so Yahweh Shai gave specific directions, guidance, instructions to Kepha and Yohanan what to say to this man. To tell him that well, we're looking for the guest room that Yahweh Shai is going to uh, have eat the Passover with, with his disciples. Where's the guest room? He told us to find you and you will show us. <laughs> but this is what they said to the to the man that they found. Verse 12, and he shall show you a large furnished upper room. Prepare pre prepare it there. That's what this is where he told them to prepare the, the pizza, the Passover. In a large furnished upper room. Everything was already provided all they had to do was do the work to prepare for the Passover. Hallelujah. Verse 13. And going, they found it as he had said to them, and they prepared the pizza, the Passover. So everything that Yahweh Shah had told them to do, they did it, and they prepared for the Passover. They found a man in the city with the jar of water. They found a room that was unfurnished. Everything happened exactly the way Yahweh Shah said. Verse 14, and when the hour had come, he sat down and the 12 emissaries with him, his apostles. And so this is the time when he's sitting down to eat the Passover with his disciples, who he, his reference here is the emissaries, the apostles. Hallelujah. Verse 15, and he said to them, with desire, I have desired to eat the pizza with you before my suffering. So he's explaining to them what's getting ready to happen. This is the last time he's going to sit down with his apostles, his, his disciples, and eat the Passover. And he said, with desire, I have desire to eat this pasta with you, meaning the, the disciples. He said, before my suffering, he's letting them know that this is it. This is why I came. This is why we have the scriptures. Everything was written for this reason and for this purpose. From Genesis to Revelation. Yahweh Shai came, gave his life, ro rose again on the third day, and is coming back for all of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's the context of the scriptures. You have to understand that. Verse 16. For I say to you, I shall certainly not eat of it again, until it is filled in the reign of Elohim. So he's letting them know, I'm not going to eat this Passover again until it, it is filled in the reign of Elohim, when, when Yahweh is ruling on the earth. And that's going to be when Yahweh Shai, Jesus, comes back to redeem all of the 12 tribes of Israel from the land that where we're scattered. He said, I... I shall certainly not eat of it again until it is filled in the reign of Elohim. He's coming back to rule and reign a thousand years. And all of the twelve tribes of Israel that believe the gospel of the kingdom shall rule and reign with him a thousand years. Hallelujah. This is simple. This is the gospel of the kingdom. <laughs> There's no conflict or contradiction. And all the religions take these scriptures out of context. That's why people are deceived. Verse 17. And taking the cup, giving thanks, he said, take this and divide it among yourselves. And so he's taking the cup and he's preparing to explain to them the symbolic of what this means for all of the people of Israel. He said, take this cup. And divide it among yourself because it's going to be shared for all of Israel. So the 12 disciples represents all of the 12 tribes of Israel. For I say, verse 18, for I say to you, 
I shall certainly not drink of the fruit of the vine until the reign of Elohim comes. So he's letting them know that I'm not going to drink of this wine until I come to reign. And so it's for you to drink, for you to understand that this is for you. It's not so much for me as it is for you. Verse 19, and taking bread, giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And so again, this is the Passover meal that Yahweh Shai is sharing with his disciples. And this is the meal that they ate during the Passover. It's unleavened bread called Pazat. And so he broke the bread. And when he broke the bread, he said, this is my body, which is given for you. My body is being broken. I'm giving my whole body for you. Who is you? All of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's who the you is. Do this in remembrance of me. He's speaking to all of the 12 tribes of Israel. He's speaking to his apostles, disciples, who speak to all the 12 tribes of Israel. That's why the scriptures are written for our benefit so that we can understand. That's who this is for. That's who the Passover is for. You got to understand, we were in Egypt. We were in captivity. We were in bondage. And Yahweh delivered us out of Egypt. And so we're still under captivity. We're in Roman, under Roman occupation. And so we need deliverance again. <laughs> And so that's why Yahweh Shai had came. That's why he came. That's why he's coming back. To deliver us out of captivity. To deliver us out of bondage. To deliver us out of sin. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. And so he said, do this in remembrance of me. Because I'm shedding my blood. I'm giving my body to redeem all of the 12 tribes of Israel. And I don't want you to ever forget this. This is why I'm, I'm coming. This is why I'm came. This is why I came, and this is why I'm coming back. It's for Israel, all of the twelve tribes of Israel. Period. Verse twenty. Likewise, the cup also, after supper, saying, "This cup is the renewed covenant in my blood, which is shed for you." That's referenced in Jeremiah thirty-one, thirty-one. The, the covenant that the Most High has with all of the 12 tribes of Israel, the two kingdoms, Judah and Israel. It's imperative that you understand that when Solomon sinned, all of the 12 tribes of Israel were divided into two kingdoms, 10 tribes to the north called Israel, two tribes to the south called Judah. And that still stands today. Even though we're scattered, we're still two separate kingdoms. If you don't understand that context, then you don't understand the scriptures. And so Yahweh Shai is saying, this is the cup in the new renewed covenant. The covenant is with the two kingdoms of Israel. The northern kingdom, ten tribes, and the southern kingdom, two tribes, Israel and Judah. In my blood, which is shed for you, he's giving his, he's shedding his blood for the 12 tribes of Israel. That's who the covenant is with. It's not with everybody else in the whole wide world. This is the new covenant. Now, if you think the new covenant is for everybody else, you're, you're mistaken. You're in error. You're deceived. It's not. Verse 21. But see, the hand of him delivering me up is with me on the table. And he explained to them what was happening during this time, during the Passover. And because he, it had to happen. <laughs> Everything that is happening had to happen. The same way it was then is the same way it is now. Everything that is happening have to happen. That's why we're in our captivity. We have to be here in captivity. It was prophesied. The Most High already knew we was going to mess up. He already knew we wasn't going to obey his word, his commandments, his statutes and laws. He already knew he was going to have to scatter us among all the nations of the earth. 
All the nations of the earth are blessed because we're scattered in the midst of them. If we wasn't, then this earth would be destroyed. But the Most High used them to keep us in line. They were our whooping stick. But they're going to pay for what they've done to us. <laughs> they're going to pay. Hallelujah. But this is why everything is happening. Yeah, Judah, he's doing what he had to do. This is There's vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor. Judah is the son of perdition. This is why he was born. This is why he was created. Even though he is among the 12 apostles, 12 disciples, he was born and created for this reason and for this purpose, to deliver up Yahweh Shai, to be crucified. But see, the hand of him delivering me up is with me on the table. Verse 22. For indeed the son of Adam goes, and it has been decreed, as it has been written. But woe to that man by whom he is delivered up. And when the word is mentioned woe, when you see that word, that, that doesn't mean anything good. Only tragedy and suffering and anguish and punishment. Woe to that man by whom he is delivered. And so, Yahweh Shai, Jesus is saying, Indeed, the Son of Man goes as it has been decreed. I have to give my life. I have to be delivered up. It's prophesied. The scriptures have to be fulfilled. But woe to that man by whom I'm delivered up. That's doing this. And this is why it's happening. It has to happen this way. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. Again, the Most High created vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor. And you, Judas is a vessel of dishonor. This is why he was created. He had to do it. Verse 23. And they began to ask among themselves which of them it could be who was about to do this. <laughs> and so Yahweh Shai was explaining to them what was going on. And they were confused and said, well, who's going to do it? Who's going to betray him? <laughs> They didn't, it, they didn't understand who, who it was that was going to betray Yahweh Shai at this time. Verse 24, And there also took place a dispute among them as to which of them seemed to be greater. And so these are the characteristics of the 12 disciples, the 12 apostles. And it's also characteristics of the people, all of the 12 tribes of Israel. We're still one people, still the same way. We don't understand everything. We speak before we think. <laughs> and that's why we got all these different religions and we're deceived and we're scattered because we don't always agree. It said there was a dispute among them which, that who was going to be greater. And so Yahweh Shai is telling them, I'm giving my life for you. This blood, this cup represents the blood that's going to be shed for you. All of the 12 tribes of Israel. This bread represents my body. I'm going to be tortured. I'm going to be beat and whipped for you. And the only thing they can think about, okay, when he die, who's going to be the greatest? <laughs> this is us. This is Judah, the southern kingdom. But because all of the 12 tribes represent all the, all the 12 the, uh, disciples represent all the 12 tribes of Israel. It represents all of Israel. This is how we act. This is how we think. Not thinking about what's really going on. Thinking about who's going to be the greatest. <laughs> Verse 25, but Yahweh Shai, he understands. He don't condemn us. He just work with us. <laughs> like Y'all will figure it out. Verse 25, and he said to them, the sovereigns of the nations rule over them. And those who control them are called workers of good. And so he explained to them, look, y'all acting like the world. The people in the world, the sovereigns, those that rule over everybody else in the world, they control the people and they're, they're the benefactors. They, they reap all the things that these people that they have control over, they reap the benefit. Y'all are not supposed to be like that. That's how these 501c3 corporations are set up and designed. They're controlling you. 
and they're reaping the benefits. They're using you as merchandise. He already told us we're not supposed to do that. But that's what's going on. And that's why he said, come out of here, my people. Come out of all these 501c3 corporations. It's the Antichrist church system. Verse 26. But not so with you. But let him who is greatest among you be as the youngest and the leader as one who serves. So this is the instructions from Yahweh Shai about how the 12 tribes of Israel are supposed to act and conduct themselves and behave, especially for in the ministry. We're not supposed to lord over anyone. We're supposed to be a servant. If we're a leader, we're supposed to serve. We're not supposed to get any benefit from being a leader and people catering to us. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 27. For who is greater? The one who sits at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who sits at the table? But I am in your pre in your midst as the one who serves. So he's giving us an example of what we're supposed to be like as being ministers of the gospel of the kingdom. We're supposed to serve. We're not supposed to be served. He, he made a statement, uh, an example. He said, well, which one is greater, the one that sit at the table to get served or the one that's doing the serving? Who, which one is greater? He said, is it not the one that is sitting at the table? Isn't he the greatest? He said, yeah, that's right. But I'm sitting, I'm here in your midst as one who serves. I'm making you sit down and I'm serving you. Even though I'm greater, I'm serving you. And so this is the way we're supposed to minister as servants, not ruling over people. Verse 28. But you are those who have remained with me in my trial. And so he had to correct that dispute. So that they can understand what their purpose was. He said, you have remained with me in my trials from the start to the finish. You have been here. And you got to continue on after I have been risen. Verse 29. And I covenant for you as my father covenant for me. A reign. He said that the work that you've done with me, we're in covenant. And you're going to be rewarded of my father. The same covenant that I have with my father, I'm, you're going to have the same covenant with me to reign. Hallelujah. Verse 30. To eat and to drink at my table in my reign and to sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. The kingdom of heaven is for the 12 tribes of Israel. It's not for everybody else in the whole wide world. If you think that the kingdom of heaven is for everybody else in the whole wide world, you're deceived. There's 12 gates for the 12 tribes of Israel. All other people, you're going to be a servant of Israel. That's it. That's all you can be. You're not going to be greater than the 12 tribes of Israel. You can be a servant. Verse 31. And the master said, Shimon, Shimon, see, Satan has asked for you to sift you as wheat. Satan desires to sift you as wheat, Peter. And so now he's addressing uh, Peter. Peter is called Shimon, or sometimes he's called Kepha in Hebrew. And he's addressing him because Peter, of all the disciples, Peter is the lead disciple. But at the same time, being the lead disciple, that doesn't mean he's greater or better. He's just the lead disciple. <laughs> and he's letting them know, because you are the leader, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. He wants to take advantage of you. Verse 32, But I have prayed for you that your belief should not fail. And when you have turned, when you have been converted, Strengthen your brothers. And so he's telling Peter what's getting ready to happen. Because Peter is a hothead. He speaks before he thinks. And he don't mean any harm, but that's how he is. 
And that's how a lot of us are as, as Hebrew Israelites. <laughs> we we full of emotion, but we don't always have the strength or fortitude to carry out what we think we're going to do. And so Yahweh Shai is explaining to Kepha, to Shimon, that look, I pray for you. I know you're going to go through some struggles, some hard times, some trials and tri tribulation. But I pray for you that you should not fail. You're going to go, you're going to make it through this. And when you're converted, and when you start believing the gospel of the kingdom, strengthen your brothers. Verse 33, and he said to him, Master, I am prepared to go with you both to prison and to death. <laughs> and so Kepha, Shimon, he, he was steadfast. He's like, no, man. I got you. <laughs> Whatever happened to you will, ha will happen to me. If you go to prison, I'm going. If you die, I'm dying. Whatever happened to you, I'm going to be right by your side. <laughs> Verse 34. And he said, I say to you, keeper, the cock shall not crow at all today until you have denied three times that you know me. So he let Kepha know what's getting ready to happen. He said, you're going to deny me three times before the cock crows today. And Peter don't understand. He's like, why would you say something like that? I already said I'm going to be with you. He's like, no, you're not. And so this is the thing when serving the Most High. We're going to face tribulation and trials and conflict. And when it happens, it's going to happen in a way that we don't expect it. And so we're going to respond in a way that we wasn't ex what it, a way that's not practical for the kingdom of, of, of God, with the kingdom of heaven. We're going to respond in a way that we try to protect ourselves. Listen, if we can't protect ourselves, I mean, if, if, if the Most High doesn't protect us, then we can't be protected. And so Peter is trying to protect himself when this happens. Verse 35 and he said to them, when I sent you without purse and bag and sandals, did you lack any? And they said, none at all. And so he's letting them know, look, I'm with you. I got you. When I sent you out to do ministry, I sent you without a purse, a bag, sandals. But did you lack anything <laughs> when I sent you out? He said, no, we didn't lack anything. We, everything that we needed, we, we was able to get. But we didn't lack anything. And so the same way it was then is the same way it is now. When you're doing ministry, you're not supposed to worry about where the uh, resources for your ministry is coming from. Just do the ministry. The resources will come. You ain't got to beg, borrow, steal, and persuade people to do this and do that and take advantage of people. Trust in the Most High. Trust in your power. Verse 36, and he said to them, but now let him who has a purse take it, likewise also a bag, and let him who has no sword sell his garment and buy one. And he said, saying this mainly for the scriptures to be fulfilled. All the scriptures must be fulfilled. And so this has to be said and this has to be done because it was prophesied that it had to happen. And so, in context, this is specifically during this time. It's not for all until the end of time what the, he's talking about. This is just for this one specific moment in time that he's referring to this. Verse 37, For I say to you, that was has been written has yet to be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned with the lawless one, for that which refers to me has an end to it. And so he said, this, what I'm saying to you, it has an end to it. It has to be accomplished. I am supposed to be captured and reckoned among the lawless one, people that are considered criminals. And so, yeah, that's why I'm saying this to you. Verse 38, and they said, Master, look, here are two swords. But he said to them, that is enough. So he said, okay, that's fine. That means everything is already set in order. Thank you. <laughs> Verse 39. 
Verse 39, and coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives according to usage, and he, his taught ones, his disciples, followed him. And so after the meal, after they ate the Passover, and he shared some things with them, letting them know why this Passover was important, why he was participating in this Passover, what it was for, what it meant. It's the new covenant, shedding of his blood and breaking the bread that he's going to be the Passover for all of the 12 tribes of Israel. Hallelujah. And so now they're headed out. And they went to Mount of Olives, and this is where they already gathered to like a solitude place to be to be by themselves because the crowds of people always followed them. But this is a place where they could go when they could just be alone and get some rest. And Judas, of course, he knew about this place. Verse 40, And coming to the place, he said to them, Pray that you do not enter into trial. And so this was a place of solitude where they can come and pray before the Father. And he told his disciples, y'all need to pray also that you don't enter into temptation. Temptation is all, everywhere. Everywhere you turn, everywhere you look, you're always going to be facing temptation. That's why the scripture says man ought to always pray and not faint. All of the 12 tribes of Israel, we're to pray and not faint. Verse 41, and he withdrew from them about a stone's throw and falling on his knees, he was praying. And so he went a little farther by himself to pray unto the Father because this is where the rubber meets the road. This is the reason, the purpose of why he came to, to and was born for this reason and for this purpose, to give his life, to be slain. For all of the 12 tribes of Israel. And so this is it. There ain't no turning back from this point. Verse 42. Saying, Father, if it be your counsel, remove this cup from me. Yet not my desire, but let yours be done. And so the significance of this prayer is this. It's because of his flesh. He knew he was going to have to be tortured. He knew he was going to have to be whipped and beaten and humiliated, all the things that you can imagine, all the pain and suffering of torture that you can imagine. He knew he was going to have to go through this. And nobody enjoys this type of abuse, this type of punishment. And so he's praying to the Father. He said, if it's, if it's possible, you can take this cup from me. But nevertheless, yet not my desire, yours be done. He's like, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do. Hallelujah. Verse 43. And there appeared a messenger from heaven to him, strengthening him. And so the father sent a messenger to comfort him during his, his time of test and trial. And even Yahweh was tested and tried. We're going to be tested and tried, especially if we're doing the work of the ministry, the, the work of the gospel of the kingdom. We're going to be tested and tried every day. That's why we got to always be before the Father in prayer. Verse 44. And being in agony, he was praying more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And so he was in agony praying, asking for strength and comfort to go through what he had to go through, to be encouraged. Because that's, that's what we're going to have to do. And the same thing that he's going through, a lot of us, as time draws near, the same thing is going to happen. We're going to be tested. A lot of us are going to have to give our life for the gospel of the kingdom before it's all said and done. And we're going to be facing execution. Be getting our head chopped off. Whatever they're going to do to us. And we got to be willing, ready, and able to do this. Not just say it, but you got to be prayerful when it's happening because you can say it, but when the rubber meets the road, will you do it? <laughs> Verse 45, And rising up from prayer and coming to his taught ones, he found them sleeping from grief. And so they were supposed to be praying and watching with him. 
that they don't enter into temptation, but their eyes got heavy. They were sad about what he had told them, and they fell asleep. And he caught them napping after he came to see what they, if, if they were still praying with him. Verse 46, he said to them, Why do you sleep? Rise and pray, lest you enter into trial. So he had to get on our case a lot because we didn't always act right or do right or say the right thing. <laughs> Just like a parent. And, but that means that he loved us. So he had to chastise us. The scripture says he, the most high chastised those whom he loved. And so he had to chastise them. He's like, why are y'all sleeping? You're supposed to be praying <laughs> that you don't enter into temptation. Get up. Wake up. <laughs> Verse 47. And while he was still speaking, see, a crowd, a crowd, and he who who, who was called Yehuda, one of the twelve, was going before them and came near to Yahweh Shai to kiss him. And so as Yahweh Shai was speaking to his disciples about waking up, here comes Judah with the crowd of the uh, scribes and the chief priests. <laughs> uh, and they was coming. They came to, Judah came to Yahweh Shai to kiss him. He came up near to mark him. This is the sign that I'm going to give, that this is the person that you need. I'm going to give him a kiss. And so this is what's getting ready to happen. Verse 48, And Yahweh Shai said to him, Judah, do you deliver up the son of Adam with a kiss? <laughs> so Yahweh Shai already knew what Judah was up to, why he was doing it. He said, are you trying to uh, deliver me up with a kiss? I know it's hypocritical. You don't mean it. You're just doing it so that you can mark me to show them that I'm the person that they're after. Verse 49, And those around him, seeing what was about to take place, said to him, Master, shall we strike with the sword? And so the disciples, <laughs> you had told us to bring swords. Shall we use them? Shall we strike with our sword now? Is this the time to fight? <laughs> Verse 50, And one of them struck the servant, of the high priest and cut off his right ear. He didn't wait to hear the answer. He just, okay, we got our sword. Y'all gonna take our master over our dead body. <laughs> so he struck one of the servants of the high priest and cut off his right ear. Verse 51, And Yahweh Shai answering said, Allow it this far. And touching his ear, he healed him. Healed him. And so Yahweh Shai was seeing what was going on. And he said, okay, this is the that 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 was that's covering it. I'm I'm that to fulfilling that scripture that I'm among the the uh, lawless ones. So that's enough. You can put away your sword. And he touched the high priest servant's ear and healed his ear. Verse fifty two. And Yahweh Shai said to those who had come against him, the chief priests and the captains of the set apart place of the temple, and the elders, have you come out? as against a robber with swords and clubs. So he's letting them know, look, why y'all coming out here with clubs and swords as if I'm a robber? <laughs> Did I rob anybody? Did I steal from anybody? Did I kill somebody? Why are you coming out here this way? Verse 53, when I was with you daily in the set-apart place, you did not lay hands on me, but this is your hour and the authority of darkness. He said, if y'all wanted to catch me, I was in the temple teaching and preaching. You could have caught me there. You didn't have to wait until this time. He said, but this is your time. This is your hour, the hour of darkness, the authority of darkness. So I know why you're doing it, because you're of the devil. Verse 34, and having seized him, they, lit, they led him and brought him to the house of the high priest, Kepha, who and Kepha was following at a distance. And so the, the chief priests and the scribes and the captains and the high priests, they, they led away, the elders, they led away Yahweh Shai Jesus to the high priest's uh, house. And Kepha, uh, he followed along at a distance to see what was going on. Verse 55, and when they had lit a fire in the midst of the courtyard and sat down together. Kepha 
that among them. And so Peter, who we call Keith, Keith who we call Peter, he's, he's trying to see what's going on, what, what's going to happen to Yahweh Yeh Shai. They, they've taken him to the high priest's house. They're in the courtyard. They lit a fire to keep warm. It must be cold outside. And so Peter is hanging out with everybody that's standing around at the fire, keeping warm. Verse 56, And a certain servant girl, seeing him as he sat by the fire, looked intently at him and said, And this one was with him. <laughs> and so this girl, she recognized that Peter, Kepha, was one of the disciples that followed Yahweh Shai. He said, yeah, you, you one of his disciples. I've seen you before. <laughs> Verse 57, and he denied him. And he denied him, saying, woman, I do not know him. And so Peter, Kepha, immediately denied that he know Yahweh Shai. He's like, woman, I don't, know, I don't know him. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know Yahweh Shai. I don't know Jesus. You got the wrong person. <laughs> Verse 58, and after a little while, another saw him and, and said, you are one of them too. But Kepha said, man, I'm not. <laughs> and so a little time had passed, he's still sitting down with, with the crowd of people. And that's how temptation and it comes, not the way you expect it. And Peter never planned on denying Christ. That, that wasn't in his heart to do. But when temptation comes, it comes in an hour that you don't expect it. And if you're not prayed up, you're going to fall. And that's what's happening with Peter. He didn't have enough strength to stand. Temptation came and took him out. And it was prophesied to happen. And Yahweh Shah warned him, like, this is going to happen. You're going to deny me three times. And as we can see, this is exactly what's happening. He's already denied him twice. Somebody else said, yeah, yeah, you, you was with him. <laughs> I remember seeing you too. <laughs> Verse 59, and about an hour later, another insisted, saying, truly, this one was with him too, for he is a Galilean. And so another person, a few hours later, time going by, and he's still warming himself up at the fire. Another person said, yep, I, saw you, I seen you before. You, you want to be a disciple? <laughs> Uh, verse 60, Kepha said, man, I do not know what you're saying. And immediately, while he was still speaking, a cock crowed. And so Peter, warming himself by the fire, <laughs> trying to keep warm, denied Yahweh Shai Jesus three times. And I guess he really didn't realize what he was doing. It didn't click with him. And then the cock crowed. crowed. And after that, he realized, oh, my goodness, I done denied the Most High Yahweh Shai three times. And because if he hadn't realized what he was doing, maybe he would have walked away or something. But he was trying to defend himself. Like, I don't know what y'all talking about. <laughs> you had forgot that, that, he, that Yahweh Shai had said, oh, when you deny me three times, the cock is going to crow. And that's exactly what happened. And immediately... While he was speaking, the cock crowed. As soon as he denied, I don't know, the cock crowed. <laughs> Verse 61, and the master turned and looked at Kepha, Peter, and Kepha remembered the word of the master, how he had said to him, before cock crows, you shall deny me three times. And that's exactly what happened. Peter, Kepha denied Yahweh shot three times, and immediately upon the third time, the cock crowed. Hallelujah. Verse 62, and Kepha went out and wept bitterly. And so when this happened, uh, Peter, Kepha, he was sad because Yahweh Shai had warned him and told him exactly what was going to happen. And so at this point, he didn't, he, he didn't know what to do. And he was sad that he couldn't believe what he did. <laughs> Verse 63, and the men who were holding Yahweh Shai were mocking him and beating him. And so this is what happens when you are arrested, when you're taken into custody by the ruling class, by the people that are ruling over you. Even the, not the, 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 the Romans, the, 
the 501c3 corporation, the chief priests, the scribes, the captains, they're the ones that have Yahweh Shai in custody. And so anytime someone takes you in custody, you're their property. You're in war with them. They can do with you whatever they want. And so they were mocking him and beating him. This is what was going on. Again, this is what's going to happen to us as the chosen people. If we continue in the faith and the time draws near, it's going to get a lot worse. We're going to face a whole lot more trouble than trials and tribulations. Hallelujah. We need to be prepared and be warned. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 64, And having blindfolded him, they were striking him on the face and were asking him, saying, Prophesy, who is it that struck you? And so they was mocking Yahweh, hitting him and striking him and beating him, blindfolded him, said, Prophesy, who hit you? Was it who hit you? Tell us which one of us hit you. Verse 65, and they said to him, much more, blaspheming. And so this went on for hours on end until the break of day. Verse 66. And when it became day, the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, came together and they led him into the, their council saying. And so now this is their mock trial to, to hold Yahweh Shai accountable for saying that he is the Messiah, the Savior of Israel. They're bringing him into the council. Verse 67. If you are the Messiah, say to us. He said to them, if I say to you, you would not believe it at all. And so they're asking Yahweh Shai questions. And he said, well, look, I don't mind answering you and giving you what you asked for, but you're not going to believe it. <laughs> Why are you asking me? <laughs> Verse 68, and if I ask you, you would not answer me at all. He said, so what's the point of asking questions if nothing is going to be accomplished by asking the question? Verse 69, from now on, the son of Adam shall sit on the right hand of the of power of Elohim. And so he said, let's go ahead and end this. I know why you're asking me. You want to know if I'm the Messiah. He said, from now on, from this time forward, the son of man, the son of Adam, the chosen uh, person to redeem all of the 12 tribes of Israel, the Messiah, yeah, that's me. He's going to sit on the right hand of power of Elohim. That's, who I, that's why I came. Verse 70, and they all said, Are you then the son of Elohim? And he said to them, You say that I am, meaning it is as you say. Yes, I am the, the, the son of Elohim. Hallelujah. Verse 71, and they said, why do we need further witness? For we heard it ourselves from his, his mouth. And so that's all they wanted to hear to condemn Yahweh Shai to death. And they couldn't really put him to death, but they couldn't condemn him. <laughs> and so this is what's getting ready to happen. They're going to take him over to Pilate. But thank you for listening. See you next time. Shalom.